Planning for your home menu and wanting to look for an ID but not sure where to begin? Home Trust can help you with that. On the main page, simply click on Get Recommendations and complete a few simple questions. Firstly, select a theme you are going for and some of the key design features you are interested to include in your new home. Next, submit details like the floor area and your budget. Finally, complete your contact information. Home Trust will match with you with 3 to 5 shortlisted IDs based on your preferences and requirements. It's that simple. Visit hometrust.sg now. Let's start off in the foyer. Quite a number of you have DM us to find out how we DIY our smart home using the Samsung SmartThings ecosystem. While our smart home series will come later on, here are some use cases that will be helpful for those who are planning for your smart home. For instance, we have a contact sensor on our main door, so a rule is set that whenever the door is open at night, it will turn on our foyer smart light for 5 minutes. We also set a rule to alert us on our phones if the door is not closed properly. Our foyer niche has a smart LED strip from ProLink, which is programmed to turn on for 1 minute should motion be detected by a motion sensor. Our Google Nest Hub is here as well. We don't really physically control it often. If you notice, most of our automations are run in the background and voice is so much faster. As nearly all our smart home devices are compatible with Samsung SmartThings, they are in turn compatible with Google Home and will appear on the screen here. Our reconstructed DB box has a motion sensor light from IKEA. This is the Stoita, and unlike the Norfly as seen in our previous episode, the Stoita is battery powered so it's suitable for those with second thoughts as you don't need to cater a socket for it. Our carpenter was kind enough to maximize shelving for us using extra wood planks. Storage space is really important to reduce clutter from sight. Below the niche, our original idea was to house our shoes here and to reduce more growth, we even catered for our grommet so that our electrical dehumidifier rod can be stationed right at the bottom. In the end, we decided to place all our doggo's equipment and supplies here instead and kept our shoes outside. And this is Nori. She is sure to come here whenever we open the doors. Now let's talk about how we conceal the bomb shelter door. We came up with two ideas for discussion. The first option is shelving at the back of the carpentry door, something like this. We don't really like this idea because firstly, the aroma of the shoes will enter and get trapped in the stink bomb shelter. Secondly, as the module utilizes tiny wheels, constant opening and closing will degrade our flooring over time. Option 2 is something we really wanted but not sure if it could be done. Basically, we wanted a tic tac door at the front with shelving. The entire module then swings up to reveal the bomb shelter. The good thing about this method is that we can store our day-to-day -day items here and not having to constantly open the entire module. If you store shoes here, this will also minimize the aromatic diffusion into your bomb shelter. Our carpenter managed to bring our option 2 to life. We store our supplies here for quick access. Our bomb shelter is now an archival place to stow away things that we won't really touch to minimize entry. Here's a quick look at how the module is supported by 5 big hinges and wheels on the ground. Above the module is a door that swings upwards and holds in place should we need to ventilate the bomb shelter. One important thing is to ensure that your carpentry would not hit your foyer ceiling light. We had to relocate several lights in our house and electrical works are extremely dusty, especially since we have moved in midway through our reno. We also want to introduce to you a new term called carpentry profile, aka the filler between the wall and the carpentry. Most IDs or carpenters will stay silent on this until you ask. The thicker the profile, the easier it is for carpenters. We have seen 2cm profiles before and tried negotiating, but our carpenters said the best you could do is 5cm. It eventually ended up at 8cm and we decided to close at 9 because we are impressed by the work quality. The base of all our carpentry is fixed at 10 cm. Anyway, just remember to have the profile thickness documented down in your carpentry 2D drawings to reduce any room for misunderstanding. For example, back to our walk-in wardrobe, when we met our carpenter for on-site measurements, he verbally agreed to a 5 cm profile but on installation day, we noticed it was 10 cm. This is how it looks like before a laminate is glued on. We referred back to the drawing and it was really written as such. We didn't pick this up so remember to be very vigilant when reviewing and approving your carpentry 2D. In fact, BCA has published a series of industry best practices for renovation. It's quite a good reference for quality control if you're doing a post reno defects check. This is an excerpt from the carpentry topic. Even the guide says that the profile should be 5cm. Huh? Anyway, this is a great read so do check out the link in the description box below. Back to the foyer. The last segment is our arc mirror. Our carpenter is amazing but he did attempt to sell smoke us by saying he would do a rectangle mirror and the arc flaps will give the illusion. If done that way, you will see the reflection of the ugly flaps in the mirror. We insisted we wanted a fully 3D arc and showed him pictures that it could be done. Eventually, he relented and we loved the final look. We also requested to add these thin pieces to flush nicely with the rest of the carpentry. The mirror is good for us to do final checks before we leave the house. Even Miso checks himself out from time to time. Having each of our own socks drawer was high on our list. Yeah, Sam has a big peeve whenever our socks get mixed up together. Glad I don't have to see Lin's messy socks anymore. Always think about your day-to-day -day workflow and design your house in a manner that makes sense for your family. Moving into our living room, starting with our sofa. We searched high and low for adult-friendly material and found it in an European fabric called Aqua Clean. 
Our doggos are a part of our family and we don't want to restrict their freedom in an already tiny house. Miso and Nori really love lazing and playing on our sofa and with the aqua clean fabric, it is super easy to maintain. As its name suggests, all we need is water or baby wipes and it can remove almost everything from doggo pee stains to soya sauce. We share more about our sofa and our reno journey on our Lemonade channel, so do follow us there. This is great for those who enjoy the deeds in a different format. Over time, we will share more on the Go content for home living, smart home, doggo care and more. So stay tuned! The space in between our sofa and the bay window is the perfect spot for one of the best robots in the market today. They recently launched Jimmy L10 Ultra. One look at it and you know this thing is packed with serious features. It's super intelligent for a robot, using LiDAR navigation to generate a 3D map of our home allowing us to customize zones, cleaning schedules and modes all in the app. It's also rather polite, gently waking Miso up whenever he's in the way. Glad to see that they all coexist well together. The Dreamy L10 Ultra also changed our perceptions about robots. We always thought that lots of manual work is required, but I guess those robots of the past do not come with an intelligent station like the modern ones today. All we need to do is to discharge the used water tank every 2-3 to three runs and top up the 25 liters clean water tank with low start floor detergent. And that's it, everything else is automated, dirt is auto empty into a bag that takes months to fill up, the mop pads are auto washed and auto dried with hot air after each cleaning run. We don't even need to press or set anything. Having the robot around also frees up our time cleaning to focus on other things in life like playing with our doggos or preparing the home for an impromptu gathering. This is truly a lifesaver and we really recommend this to our friends, families and now to you. We are still amazed at how squeaky clean our floor feels. If we have doggos like us, we will know how dirty your floors get every day. Ever since we have the L10 Ultra, we never had to use the tiring and even smelly traditional mop at all. Do consider the L10 Ultra and use our promo code for more savings. Details can be found in the description box below. Having a bay window was high on our Renault to-do list because we host big groups often and this allows guests to comfortably sit around and chat. This is also one of Miso's cozy corner and we often catch him daydreaming and gazing into the outside world. If you have been following our journey, you will also remember our Samsung The Frame plan was the most stressful idea we had to bring to life. We are glad it all worked out and in fact, our TV actually fooled a lot of guests and even gave some of them a shock. To recap, our Samsung One Connect box is connected to the bay window and we designed this pull-out mini TV console. We share more about this idea of ours on our Lemonade post, so do check it out if you are planning to do something similar. A small mistake that cost us $80 was the repositioning of the TV. We were asked by both the plaster sale team and the TV installers if we wanted the TV to be mounted in the middle on the wall or middle from the bay window, and we chose the wall. But we completely forgot about the curtains. So take note that whenever you are centralizing stuff, always account for the most protruding object on either side. Luckily, the solid wood extended sufficiently for us to safely shift it to the left. Our Weeper 4 curtains and Tuya Smart Motors are supplied by MGL Curtains. Throughout our previous episodes, we have been reminding you to plan your smart curtains carefully right from the start because you will need to think about your smart home compatibility, cater for the electrical wiring, floor ceiling, helmet distances and more. We are thankful it all worked out in the end. The Philips Hue system is worth getting just for this seamlessly connected dial remote, which other brands do not offer. Of all the smart light brands we have tested, Hue is still the most reliable and highly integrated system, which justifies its price point. Our cold flights are the Hue Ambience Gradient Light Strips, which cost a bomb. Philips Hue recently teamed up with Samsung on the integration that syncs your Hue lights with your Samsung TV. We sync it with our cold flights and the end result is stunning. Here's a plug for Disney Plus and Door, quite possibly the best Star Wars series yet. The scene really gives us a more immersive visual experience. We didn't get the Hue downlights because those are ridiculously expensive, so we found an alternative cheaper brand called Galadopo, which connects to the Hue system too, which means the colors can all sync up from the living room to the dining room and our pendant lights with the Hue E27 bulbs. The Panasonic 24K aircon unit is located here and serving both the living and dining areas well. And now this is something we are super proud of, our self-designed curved dining banquet. We fought long and hard to get this curved banquet right from day one. We weren't given assurance that it could really be done and there were not many examples online to illustrate what we had in mind. Even during on-site measurement with our ID and carpenter, they said this was the best they could do. Our gripe with this is the fact that the person sitting in the middle wouldn't feel comfortable because there's no proper back support with this right angled backing. What we really wanted is a smooth, wide, curved backing and maximized storage. This is more aesthetically pleasing and we will also allow for more display space at the corner. Finally, our carpenter agreed that this could be done and even then we were still rather unconvinced that it could bring our vision to life. Thankfully, it all worked out. Our carpenter really is the MVP of all the vendors our ID used and the saving grace of our entire reno journey. We eliminated all dead space in the sitting area so storage is a plenty and maximized to the right angled corner. We got the carpenter and electrician to install a double socket 
This was really useful for friends to charge their phones and for us to plug in the steamboat. Having a round dining table is a must-have for us. We find it perfect for gatherings, meals and board games. We are surprised at the number of people that can actually fit around the table and even in our entire home. Behind the banquet is a kitchen counter where our power track is located. We also wanted this thin ledge where guests can safely place their drinks within reach while playing card games. This curved corner is one of the very few display spaces we have catered to collect dust in our home. Haven't really thought about how to design this corner, but for now we have a usual vase with pretentious dried pampas looking stuff. The wood design doors and door frames gave a lot of homeowners in our estate a headache. Firstly, those who opted out of the doors were still given the frames, so they had to buy them from homeowners who don't want them. We are glad we managed to sell our doors away midway through Reno and even had a fun time delivering them. Secondly, if your home team does not comprise wood elements, then you'll probably want to find a solution. Painting is the cheapest and easiest method, but it's irreversible. Some paints may even spoil the door and door frames. Also, a lot of homeowners regret seeing the messy brush strokes and paint pills. The other solution is laminating over them. For doors, we found that buying brand new, better quality doors are surprisingly cheaper than laminating existing ones. However, the reverse is true for door frames. Laminating door frames is cheaper than the total cost associated with dismantling, making good existing door frames and buying new ones. We replaced our doors and found an answer for our door frames in the 3M Dynock. We were reading the product specs and were impressed by the resistance to heat, moisture, stain and chemicals and ease of maintenance. Jastec is the authorized distributor and applicator of the 3M Dynock. Do reach out to Jastec to find out more. We really love how our doors and door frames look like now. This is the best solution combo we found. For those who are in a similar situation, hope you found this useful.